Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk again and today I'm going to tell you about how to plastic coat foam with a rigid coating which is something that I've been thinking about for quite some time I've finally come up with a process so um, if you have a look at my website you can find my Iron Man suit which was all made out of foam um, basically it's plastazote foam, the piece here which is uh, flexible foam, it's 10mm thick, this is LD45 foam uh, basically the advantage of foam building is that um, you can bend the foam in two directions at once so you can make compound curves so for the face plate and the other pieces that have curves in two directions you can make them in one piece you can heat this up with a hot air gun and you can bend it into shape uh, which basically is much quicker to build the thing than it is if you use paper with pepicura and then reinforce it with fiberglass and try and sand all the edges off and get it perfectly smooth so built the whole suit out of foam and then I painted it, you can find the process on the website basically I sealed it and painted it but um, it looks okay but it still looks you know a bit like painted foam so the sort of holy grail I think in prop building is going to be if we could build out foam and then we could coat it with a rigid plastic coating that we could sand and fill as if it's a plastic or fiberglass suit so I'm just going to bring the camera in and I'll show you what I've got on the table so I've already done some samples, this is plaster oak foam which is the same as this one but I've basically rigid coated it with plastic um, obviously the back is a bit of a mess but I've mostly concentrated on that surface so it's quite rigid now, it's got just a thin skin of plastic over it I've also done a piece of expanded polystyrene just like packing or insulation foam I've done the same thing with that really only on the front face uh, the edges and the back I didn't take too much care of there's some drips there where the plastic uh, has run off so um, it also work if you wanted to coat cardboard as well so you could coat, build a prop out of some expanded polystyrene some plaster oat for big contours and then you could um, build some of it out of all of these materials and basically give it a rigid plastic coating so you should be able to get the same finish that you would get out of a plastic prop that you've essentially made out of cardboard tubes or polystyrene sheets etc so um, basically I've used smooth on 65D rotocast to coat these if you try and coat directly on the foam then a weird thing happens it kind of semi soaks in and then it flakes off and it's a bit weird and I'm pretty sure people who've tried polyester resin and fiberglassing over this foam have had um, similar problems so basically I've come up with a process to effectively prime the foam so that the polyurethane resin will stick to it and then rotocast on the outside of the piece so um, the next thing is I'm going to do this step by step for a prop piece and I'm going to show you the whole process hopefully it's going to turn out fine So I've made this generic costume piece out of plaster oak foam, as I said it's 10mm LD45 um, It's not supposed to be anything specific, I just cut some sections out drew the contours um, by drawing around a plate from the kitchen and basically just put this together, it's got a strip down the middle There's quite a few um, gaps in it which, you know, obviously if you were just to paint the foam then the gaps would still be apparent and it, there's some glue on the outside and it looks a bit messy um, it's not the best it could be. I've stuck some cardboard tubes on the inside and that's just to hold it by so when I'm working on it I can hold it and when I put it down it's not touching the surface so things can dry and it doesn't stick to the table. So yes as you've noticed the answer is PVA so basically this is white glue or wood glue um, um, and it's used in building for sealing and all sorts of things. Sealer and primer bonds most building materials and surfaces ideal for plastering, rendering, sealing and dust proofing so you can get this in most DIY stores, this came from Wix in the UK but there's plenty of PVA and wood glue type products on the market so the first thing I've got to do is coat this with PVA I'm going to do three coats because that makes a nice smooth shiny surface and in fact it's what I used to prime my other Iron Man suit before I painted it so and then after that we're going to use Smooth On 65D to rotocast the outside and give it a plastic coating you could of course coat the inside and the outside I'm probably going to take my PVA just around to the inside edges just so the plastic can go right over to the inside and then leave the majority of the inside as foam so I've just got some PVA in a yoghurt pot 
and a small brush. I'm going to try and spread it as much as possible. And I'm just going to coat the entire thing. And I'm also going around the edges slightly, uh, probably an inch or so onto the inside. So, okay, so I've coated the whole thing with PVA and uh, around the a bit of the inside as well, so the plastic, as I said, can come over. And basically, we just need to leave that to dry. PVA dries clear. So you'll know when it's dry because it'll be black again and it'll look a bit shiny. Then we need to do another two coats. Let me just leave that to dry. Okay, so that's one coat, mostly dry. There's still some PVA that's white in the gaps, but anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the second coat on. Okay, so that's the second coat done. I'm gonna let that dry and do one more and then we'll do the plastic coating. Okay, so I've now done three coats of PVA on here. You can see it's nice and shiny and I've let that dry overnight, mainly because urethane hates moisture. So the key thing about PVA is that it's water soluble. So if I make my finger wet and touch this, it becomes sticky again, um, which basically means anything you apply, um, which is liquid is gonna bite into the surface and really bond to the PVA, which is what we want. So before you consider priming the piece with something like Plasti Dip, which is solvent based and not water soluble, you probably wanna consider that PVA is the best thing purely because um, anything, as I say, that's liquid is going to really bite into it and stick. So I'm going to use Smooth on 65D, which is a rotocast resin, which typically you'd put into a mould and then you'd rotate the mould around so it coats the inside of the mould. Um, basically, it's kind of self-leveling, so as long as you keep the piece moving, you get a nice smooth finish. Um, some other urethanes cure quite quick, so they'll leave lumps and things whereas this is kind of slow curing from liquid through to a gel through to solid. So it's specifically designed for rotational casting. What I'm gonna try and do is rotate, uh, basically rotationally cast on the outside by brushing on the urethane all over, and then as it sets, keeping the piece rotated um, so that it coats the piece evenly. And then we're gonna do two or three coats and that's how we're gonna plastic coat it. Um, as I said at the start of the video, the urethane won't really stick to the plastazote um, by itself, which is why we've coated it with PVA to basically prime the surface and sort of make that layer that bonds to both the plastazote and to the urethane. And if you're doing expanded polystyrene, then it basically stops the polystyrene melting, which is what would happen otherwise if you put urethane straight on it. So I've got the two components poured out already, which are an equal part of A and B. Put some gloves on. I'll we'll just mix those up. Just get a mixing stick. I'm going to use these plastic disposable spoons because they're quite cheap. They'll just be thrown away otherwise. You're probably going to end up ruining a brush for every coat, although you can, um, well basically acetone is polyurethane thinners. So if you want to try and clean the brushes out in between, acetone is the thing to use. Personally I'm probably just going to throw them away. I've got some cheap chip brushes from a fiberglass supplier where you get a big box of brushes for not very much money each. So effectively they're disposable. Let's just get rid of that. And now I'm just gonna paint a thin coat of urethane all over. So the stuff's quite runny to start with. And cover it and brush out any bubbles as well. I'm going to go round um, again and just do the inside. Just try and give this an even coat all over. So a few minutes later, you can see some of that starting to set and turn white. So uh, there's a few bubbles in there, which I'm probably going to sand out before we do the next coat. So we'll just see what it looks like when it's cured. 
Okay, so it's about 20 minutes later maybe. Majority of that set, it's a bit patchy um, and some of it has accumulated around the edges. Um, this is only the second time I've actually tried to do this, so I'd expect that probably um, a larger quantity of thinner coats would be best as always. Um, so it doesn't accumulate too much in any areas. But of course it's plastic, so we can sand that off anyway. There's a few air bubbles that have occurred, which I've actually um, I've just given it a rub over with one of these sanding pads just to try and um, make sure the next coat will fill them. But obviously being plastic, it's already quite plasticky feeling. We can um, scrape car body filler over whatever, the same as you would with bubbles in a fiberglass cast. So now I'm just going to do another coat, and I think I'm going to leave it at two for this for the purposes of this test. Obviously, you could keep layering them up or do um, three or four thinner coats. So let's just do one more. Urethane tends to spread quite far over the surface, so I've probably got far too much in here. But it's better than not enough. So, okay, so that's two coats of urethane. I've got a fairly consistent. Uh, coating now there's a few patches that look a bit thinner so probably as I said before a larger number of thin coats would be better um, but in any case it's quite glossy and lovely so um, I'm basically going to treat it like plastic from now on because it is so I'm going to give that a light sand and hit it with some plastic primer and we'll see what it looks like so I've just hit that with some plastic primer it's looking not too bad, there's a few imperfections which of course you could sand out if you wanted to but um, on the whole I'm pretty happy with it so I think the next thing is to hit it with some Iron Man Red and we'll see what that looks like, see if we can get a gloss finish on it. So the paint's dry and here's the finished piece. As you can see it's quite shiny and glossy all over. Um, it's not a bad finish, it could have been marginally better but not too bad for the sort of really only the first attempt at coating a piece like this with plastic. So I guess the key message is that the PVA primer helps urethane stick to the plastazote when it wouldn't otherwise and it really bites in to give a really uniform finish. Um, obviously as I said at the beginning it also works with expanded polystyrene foam which would normally melt. There's my polystyrene piece again, and of course it'd also work with cardboard tubes or any other sort of materials really you could stick PVA to. So I think my next project is going to be something like a Terminator endoskeleton um, with big contours made of plastazote foam, and then some of the other pieces made of carved polystyrene, some cardboard tubes, and probably some resin cast parts. And then the whole thing's going to be plastic coated and I can get a really good glossy finish on it and uh, paint it up to look like metal. So there's some details on this on my website at xrobots.co.uk slash coating with some pictures of the test pieces that I did and the step-by-step -step process also written down in words um, with the products that I've used detailed. That's it for now. Goodbye.